Let's see how to customize our dialog SVG. First of all, let's try with using a texture to tile as a background. I found this wood texture online. Let's embed it in the SVG file. Now let's resize it to be as the same size as the center element. Now we can remove the old center element. Make sure that the texture is the new center element. Let's see how this looks by switching to another theme and then back to Sonia. As you can see, the image was not tiled. In order to do so, we need to create a new object, a normal black rectangle that we'll call Hint Tile Center. Let's see how it looks now. Pretty good, but the borders are the old ones. To make the borders use the tiled image as well, let's duplicate the center image to the left and to the top left. Now let's bring those to the background with page down. Then select both the image and the border, then object, clip, set. Do this for both of them. Now we have to export the two to some random directory. Let's give them a decent image size. Than that, let's import the images back to the SVG file. Make sure to click embed, not link. Now let's position the images back where they belong. We can duplicate and rotate the two elements to cover all of the borders. Make sure that all the images are aligned with the grid. When you have all the tiled images, just push them to the background again with page down so that we can remove the old elements. The last thing to do is to set all the IDs again, top, top left, left and so on. Now let's restart the Sonia theme again and see, it's beautiful. Now let's try to make a gradient for background. Let's edit the center element to have one as its fill method. Let's say one that goes vertically from opacity 100 to 40. Let's also apply the same gradient to the left and then to the right elements. Then let's make sure that the bottom elements have 100% opacity and that the top ones have 40% opacity. In order to use a gradient, we need the sides to be scratched, not tiled. In order to do that, let's make a new object, uh, again, black rectangle called Hint Stretch Borders. Let's restart Sonia and try this out. Yep, works as intended. Next up is to add the inset shadow hint. This hint says by how much the shadow is inside the dialog. In this case, the shadow is outside the dialog, so they don't get inside it at all. So after creating the four new elements, making them green, cause why not? And giving them the name shadow hint top inset shadow hint left inset and so on let's make those elements almost zero in size 0.001 will do this is because we can't have those elements to be zero exactly we can finally say that we are done with the dialog svg let's resize the svg page borders let's go to document properties resize page to fit content and give it a bit of a margin like five pixels now this is much better, you see? 
Let's close this file. We now have to copy the dialog SVG we just made to trans transparent dialogs. It will be used when contrast effect is on. And then to opaque dialogs. It will be used when compositing is off. We also have to make the opaque one actually opaque. So let's remove the gradient we just did and set a 100 opacity value. Finally, we can start working on the panel background. We can use the dialog as a start. Let's copy the file to widgets and rename it to panel background.svg. Let's open it. We can customize the panel background as we've already seen, but for now, let's keep it as is. The biggest difference we have to implement here is the thick margins. These are needed to support the margin areas. If you don't know what those are, I've made a video about them. Let's try again to copy the four margins, but this time we shall make them dark pink, cause why not? Let's call them thick int top margin, thick int right margin, and so on. Finally, we need to create another black rectangle. This time it shall be called thick center. This is needed to make the thick margin hints actually readable. Now let's restart the plasma theme. By editing the panel, we can see that the margin areas are indeed working. So that was it. If you want to see other videos, check out the devlog I've made to the right and subscribe if you want to be notified next week when I'll publish the part 3 of this guide.